It's a hot and sweaty day here in Dubai. Welcome to the channel. This is part two of the heat exchanger rebuild and installation videos. You saw earlier how we rebuilt the heat exchanger. Now you're going to see the heat exchanger being installed, um, a couple of the issues that we had, and then finally, um, with a nice sea trial where I'm pleased to report everything performed well. All we've got to do now is do the same to the starboard engine that we've done to the port engine, and we should be good for quite some time to come with regular maintenance, oil changes, um, that sort of thing, um, changing out the anodes. When we do engine work on the boat in future, I will be posting short videos. So please enjoy part two of the heat exchanger videos and thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. I need as many subscribers as I can get and I really appreciate you subscribing and also hitting the notify button. So every time a video comes out, you'll be sure to see it. Thanks very much. Welcome aboard Coronet for the cylinder head rebuild and fitting of the refurbished heat exchangers. When we do the starboard engine, we'll do a full um, video on stripping down and reinstalling the cylinder heads. Um, but this video is gonna focus mainly on reinstalling the heat exchangers. So Rex is now working on the connection between the, the, the turbo to the after cooler. Um, he's just cleaning up the flanges, making everything ready to get a nice airtight seal. Rex, how many years have you been working on Volvo Penta engines? Now, uh, 11. 11 years? Yeah. Wow. So there's not much you don't know. No, this one is, I think second time only I can hear this, like this engine, it's this old one. 44 years old, Rex. Yeah, 46. <laughs> How old are you? 46. So you were two years old when this engine was built, huh? I think so. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. There's the after -cook cooler unpacked, ready for installation. Looks really nice. Looks, a... can't wait till it's back on. Rex, how long do you think it'll take to get everything done today? I think four hours. About four hours, huh? Yeah. There we've got the after cooler lifted into place. Yeah, now we've got to install the gaskets. Just putting some bolts in so the gasket stays in position when they offer the after cooler up to the engine. And she's on. All that remains now is for it to be tightened up. Then all the connections made, and then we can get on with the heat exchanger. Now we've unpacked the heat exchanger, and it looks really good. So that'll be going on shortly. So Rick's is getting the heat exchanger ready now to install, putting on the flexible pipes. There we go, lifting the heat exchanger into position. So what we're going to do in future is service these every six months. Very simple to install. And then we connect it to the after cooler with a flexible pipe. So we've got our first problem with these securing bolts. You can see threads are damaged so we're going to have to go out and find some new bolts or get some machines. So sometime in the past, yeah, I think it changes. someone has put the wrong bolts back in. The thread on the left is the correct thread. So we're just going off now to find some new bolts with the correct thread and correct length. See, and that's why it's good having Volvo do the work instead of some backstreet mechanic. Now Rex and his assistant are going to work on connecting up the turbocharger and getting the injector lines all secured. There you can see the oil cooler. What we'll do when all this work's finished, and we do an oil change, we'll take that up for servicing as well. That'll be another video. In 
injectors are nearly connected up, they're just, just bleeding the system at the moment. So that's another task finished before we can get the engines fired up. So we've got the correct bolts now, so that means we can get back on with installing the heat exchanger. How are they, Rex? It's okay, yeah? Yeah. Done. And we've got extra for when we take the heat exchanger off the other side. Yeah, it's good. I'll bring up the heat exchanger for the second time. Now we've got the correct bolts. Yeah. You need some washers on those. Yeah, oh, yeah we've got washers. There we go, tighten up the bolts now. There we are, done. Just got to connect it up. Just, just putting some silicon gasket material around here before we put the hose on to ensure we get a perfect seal. Is that the last hose to be connected, Rex? One more, sir. One more, huh? All the connections are done now, we're adding the coolant. Check the hoses are all tight, everything, and then we'll be ready to start. Here we go. Rex, can we start? Yeah. There she blows! Running nice and sweet. So all we've got to do now is the sea trial, clean up the engine room the boat back in business until we do the starboard engine. Just standing outside now, we've had the engines running for a couple of hours, no issues so far, so we're going off on a quick sea trial and see how she fares, see if we can get the revs up. There's one part of the creek where we can do that. And so looking forward to this, not been out on the boat now for several months when the lockdown restrictions were eased, then of course, we couldn't go out because we were waiting for parts for the boat and the heat exchanger rebuild. So finally, it's a nice day. We're back on, back on the water. We've got the engine hatch open, just so we can keep an eye, make sure we have no leaks or anything. But it's running nice and sweet. Very pleased with this. It took a while to get done. Right, then we're off. Let's go outside. Just making the ropes oh. ready for a quick escape. Okay, that's the bow line in. Stern lines off. There we go. Finally, after months in the marina, we're on the water. That's a nice day for it as well. We're at quite a tight spot here now as we've got this boat literally moored one meter away or less from us and his bow sticks out so have to be very careful on the maneuvering now the warning you keep hearing is the AIS 
that's just obviously some boats here have got an AIS so that's just the collision warning giving us early warning of a boat in the vicinity nice little bit of breeze has just come up which is welcome now we're exiting the marina onto Dubai Creek In the distance you'll see the floating bridge that's closed every day until 10 p.m. but it is open all day at the weekend and then we just have a quick 20 minute less than 20 minute transit to the sea on this side we've got the creek which leads to the new well, not new anymore Dubai Creek and uh, Dubai Canal sorry and that takes us approximately an hour and 15 transit the canal to the open ocean. It's a beautiful journey. Let's just come down look at the instruments. Temperature's fine. Both engines running at 80 degrees centigrade at the moment. We'll just head down to the engine room now. For 2000 RPM. Nice clean running, exhausts are good, right, we've got to slow down now, there's only that bit we can speed in. Now we're turning around, back to the marina, some beautiful architecture here on the waterfront of Dubai. That's going to be a nice place to moor your boat. Hotel with the D1 tower in the background. In the distance, you can see where those two buildings that's Festival City. Right back to the dock. Nice views are there of the Dubai Creek golf club people are out on the greens golfing's recent leaving allowed under such strict lockdown rules there's social distancing measures being placed on the on the course and on the buggies and um, screens are being fitted to the buggies and there's a limit on the, the people that can go in the buggy but good to see people out the four engine now seems to have a lot more power than it did previously so not only have we solved the water leaks and a couple of other issues on the engine, we've actually ended up with more power as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting starboard engine um, up and running to the same condition. It's not bad, but we could do with a bit more extra power. A lot more responsive. Coming back into the marina now. The nice thing in this marina, there's a lot of boats which are actually used regularly. And people really take care of the boats. Um, this um, Dubai Friendship just coming up now, that's a beautiful boat and very well maintained. Not sure how old it is, but you know, it's definitely not a youngster. Nice converted Arabian Dow, converted to a houseboat. Liverboard houseboat can be quite tight getting in in here when we've got a current and a wind but today conditions are, are beautiful but it is a quite a low tide in the background we've got the Park Hyatt Hotel very nice hotel highly recommended for anyone who visits Dubai to stay there right on the water good restaurants She's a beauty. It's 
good to see the marina springing back to life. People are working on their boats, they're going out on their boats. The groundsmen are back, tending to the grounds and the gardens. So we're going to come in very close and reverse and go around a corner. Looks difficult, but with practice it's actually quite easy. Okay, we've just got someone coming over just to fend off, just in case. Get out of the way here. There we go, now we've got to turn. This is getting it nice and gentle. Once we've got a line ashore, we'll be nice and, nice and safe. Very tight, you can see how close the boat next next to the, this boat is. But now we're in nice square. You can hear the fenders. It's just past 10 o'clock in the morning and we're already touching 40 degrees. And it's humid. So, great conditions for conducting a, a sea trial. There we are safely back in the dock, just get the boat secured, turn the engines off and there concludes a very satisfactory sea trial. Coronet's back on the move. Mm -hmm.